Buenos dias, bon dia. Welcome to this week's message at, here at C3 City Light. I'm so glad that you tuned in today, whether that's from your house or one of our house parties. I know God is going to meet you right where you're at and give you exactly what you need. Now, this is part four of hashtag blessed, and I hope that you've enjoyed listening to this as much as I've enjoyed studying the Beatitudes. Uh, I'm going to give you everything you need for the announcements right here. One, one stop shop when it comes to announcements. Um, check out our playlist, Spotify at C3 City Light. You can search for that. It'll be the first one that pops up and you are going to love it. It's going to encourage you all throughout the week. Also, if um, this is your first time and maybe you're cruising by because one of your friends invited you or you've been here for a little bit, welcome. You made our day when you jumped on this chat. So we're glad that you're here. I'd love to meet you. So take a second, um, click on that prompt that just popped up about connecting, and I'll reach out to you this week to get to just get to know you. And then lastly, from the bottom of my heart, I want to tell you thank you. I've been so amazed at the faithfulness and generosity of our church. And if you call C3 City Light home, I just want to tell you thank you. Thanks for standing with us. Thanks for locking arms and just helping us keep going. And I just thank you. So to everyone, thank you. And you can continue to give c3citylight.com or by texting 84321. Enjoy this message. Welcome to week four of our series, Hashtag Blessed, where we've been studying the Beatitudes um, these first eight verses of the most famous sermon in the history of the planet called Sermon on the Mount. We've looked at these verses about who Jesus calls blessed. We want to be blessed, so we're looking at Jesus' words. How do we position ourselves to be blessable? We've seen that blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the gentle in spirit. We've been learning how to posture our heart and our lives in such a way that it allows the blessing of God to flow in our lives. So today is no exception. We're going to continue on with this. We know that God's desire is to bless us, but many times we're living in such a way that's out of position that we're, we're unblessable. So we want to correct that. We want to get into alignment. Have you ever gone to your fridge, maybe in the middle of the night or just whenever time, and you're looking for something to eat? And you start looking, but you're struggling to make that decision of what do I want to actually eat? You know, you're really hungry, but for whatever reason, you just stand there and you stare blankly into the fridge. You know you're hungry, but you're not sure what you're quite hungry for. You know, you look up at the yogurt, pass. Blueberries, pass. Ooh, chicken from dinner, eh, pass. Ooh, cookies, eh, pass. It'll go right there, okay. But because you're looking and nothing's really appealing, you just sit there looking and you know nothing's really going to satisfy you or make you feel better. I'm convinced this is a great metaphor for life where we pursue career, we pursue this, we pursue that, we pursue all these things that we're hungry for. But then at the end of the day, they leave us still hungry and we just never really lock on to what that target is that, that's going to what we're actually hungry for. You know, we look on that top chef and we see career. Oh, that'll satisfy me. Nah. Then we look on the other side, Jeff. Oh, health. I'll get really strong and have a six pack. And eh, that's not really going to satisfy. Then we pull out the drawer. Like, oh, money, money, money. That'll success. That'll do it. Nah, it's not really going to. We look on the side. Oh, the side drawer. Oh, let me get fame. If I'm famous, that'll do it. Or leisure, multiple vacation homes, plenty of adventure. We think all these things we pursue are going to leave us feeling filled and satisfied. But that is not the case. We get busy and we chase one thing after the next, but then we realize something is missing from our lives. That's what Matthew 5 is talking about. Matthew 5 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. There's a couple words I want us to key in on. I want us to focus on. If we pursue righteousness, we will be filled. Righteousness, filled. Being filled is so easy to understand. It just means satisfied. But what does righteousness mean? We hear it a lot in the Bible. We hear a lot about it at a church. But what does it actually mean? If this is the key to being blessed and being satisfied, then we better figure out what the word righteousness means. Righteousness simply means right with God. It means being in right standing with God. The Bible tells us in Romans 1.17, this is the good news. 
The good news shows how God makes people with himself, how to make how God makes people right with himself. Romans 1:17 says, "For in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith, first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith." It's good news. That word is literally meant gospel. It means good news. That's all it means, good news. So the gospel is the good news because it tells us how God makes people right with himself. Notice, God makes you right with him. You don't make yourself right with God. This is something that God does for us. We're going to look at this good news and why it's such good news for our life. Notice, it's something that God does for us. Like he he does the heavy lifting in this. And because of what he's done, it's a relationship. We're in right standing with them where we can have a relationship. Righteousness isn't just a relationship, but it's also a lifestyle. When we become awakened to Jesus and this life that we can have in him, we begin to believe and live our life by faith in him. That's when everything changes. Living righteous isn't done with our own efforts, but it's the fruit of experiencing faith and new life in Jesus. 1 John 2.29 says it like this, all who practice righteousness are God's true children. God loves us so much that he gave us Jesus. He gave us a way to have a relationship with him. Once we experience it and begin to realize that the only thing that really satisfies us is him. And when we realize how good it is to walk in freedom and walk in fullness and satisfaction with Jesus, we begin to see that it's better than any drug, any drink, any experience, anything you can do on earth. Walking with Jesus is better. God's best for our life is to follow him and his ways. When we develop that hunger, things begin to change left and right in our life. It's not living righteous out of fear of what could happen, but it's the fruit of faith of what he's already done for us. Living righteous is actively staying connected to the Lord. We value that relationship with him in such a way that we don't want to feel distant from him. That's what righteousness is about. It's relationship with what Jesus has done with us, but then righteousness, Jesus put us in right standing with him, but righteousness is living and staying connected with the Lord because we understand what God did for us to have a relationship with him. Whenever we start to take salvation and Christian living for granted, we want to fix our eyes on the good news of what Jesus did for us. God did what we couldn't do. We got to understand this. Romans 3.20 says, for no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. It doesn't matter how good you are. You can never be good enough. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We're all imperfect. And you know why that's a problem? Because the standard is perfection. Jesus is the standard of righteousness. God loved us so much, he sent Jesus to pay for our sins. We gotta understand that. Romans 6.23 says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. By faith, believing in Jesus, that he is the Son of God, that he died for our sins, that he didn't stay in the tomb, but that he rose from the grave, proving everything he said and that everything he offered was for real. By believing in that, Christ's righteousness is now my righteousness. We accept and we live this out of faith. I want to take this one step further because I think a lot of people get stuck at this place. This awakening of trust in Jesus and what he's done for us. Like we get it, but then we kind of just, well, now what do I do? Like I want to stay grateful. We want to stay grateful. 70 years into following Jesus, we want to be just as grateful that day as we were on day one. So how do we do that? How do we stay hungry and satisfied and filled, right, on Jesus and not other things? Well, we do what the Beatitudes instruct. Number one, we want to remind ourselves of how much God loves us. We need to do this every single day. When you wake up in the morning, Lord, help me to remember how much you love me today. 
Because the more you understand how much God loves you, the more you're going to love Him. Our problem isn't that we don't love God enough. Our problem is that we don't understand how much God loves us. Because when we understand, when we do, we can't help but love them. You want to hang out with somebody who's head over heels in love with you. His love inspires us to love and follow Him. It's not fake or conscribed. It's just not. It's a natural response to Him. We love because He first loved us. So every day, we want to remind ourselves of how much God loves us. Number two, spiritually, we want to eat clean. You know what I'm talking about, eating clean. Your broccoli and like good whole grain food. We got to stop filling up on spiritual junk food. We got to stop searching for these things that kind of scratch and itch. Like we all have this God-shaped hole in our life, but the only thing that can fill it is God. Whether you're looking at salary or status or sex or passion or possessions or position or power or prestige, anything other than God will not satisfy you, period. We are what we eat. When we see ourselves chasing those things and eating that into our life, we're consuming stuff that won't leave us filled. Isaiah 55, first two verses says this, Is anyone thirsty? Come and drink. Even if you have no money, come, take your choice wine or milk. It's all free. Why spend your money on food that does not give you strength? Why pay for food that does no good? Listen to me and you will eat what is good. You will enjoy the finest food. When we fill up on God's truth, His love, our hearts will be fully satisfied. How do you eat clean? You chew on God's word and salvation and all that He's done for you. That kind of leads us into point three. We want to get into God's word every day. This is how you feed your spirit, man. Like imagine going to the gym, crushing a workout or running on the treadmill for hours, doing all this, exerting all this energy. What happens if you just stop eating the rest of the day? Those muscles aren't going to grow. This is what happens to us when we go, when we go without getting into God's word each day. Our spirit's pulled at work and it's pulled at home and it's pulled in traffic and our minds are pulled all throughout the day and we fill it with all these other things. We've got to eat on what's pure. We got to feast on what's good and that's God's word. It satisfies our spirit and it fills our spirit, man. And number four, appetite is influenced by association. One of the coaches coaches I worked with in Dallas would always say, you show me your three friends, your, your closest three friends, and I'll show you your future. Have you ever noticed that when you're with your friends and someone says, hey, I'm hungry, I, I want some, I really want some guacamole and chips. Everyone in that group's now craving the same thing. Oh, I want some guac and chips. Let's go. I need Mexican food, right? Our appetite is influenced by those who are around us. That's why the people around us are, are really going to lead us to our future. Proverbs 2.20 says, join me in the company of good men, women, who will keep you on the path of righteousness. Some of your greatest relationships that are going to push you the furthest and closest to God are waiting to be discovered at a dinner party or on a surf team. Look, aren't aren't you growing tired of going to the refrigerator of life? Picking up this and it doesn't make you full. Picking up that and it doesn't make you full. Picking up this thing and, oh, my career is going to satisfy me. Relationships are going to satisfy me. Sex is going to satisfy me. This or that's going to satisfy me. And it just doesn't. It just leaves you hungry, staring blankly at the refrigerator of life. Christ is the only thing that can fill that need in our life. And when we begin to hunger after Him, we begin to unlock the blessing of God in our life. All the things we've wasted time and years and and money and all these things, all these things we've wasted effort on, God is what we're really hungry for because he's the only one that can genuinely satisfy us. I wanna pray for you. God, forgive us of everything that has distracted us for everything that we've placed our hope and trust in outside of you, God. We come to you today and we tell you we're sorry. We want to place all of our trust, all of our hope in you. 
forgive us, God, for living our way and doing what we want to do and prioritizing what we think is the most important, God. We want to live our life off of your priorities and your kingdom. Lord, set a spark in our hearts right now today where we would hunger for you more than anything else in life that we would hunger for your word, that we'd be satisfied by your presence, your power, and your spirit. And that we would put people around our life that would spur us on toward good works, that would just continue to encourage us and push us to be more like you every day. Pour out your blessing upon your people today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Matthew 5, verse 6. As we unpack this, there's two questions that are going to help us process this. As you're discussing it at your house party, feel free to press pause, talk about it adequately before you go into the next one. Question number one, what's one thing you've searched for fulfillment in other than God's righteousness? What effect did that have on your life? Question number two, how is eating spiritually clean challenging?